So what happened here 12 minutes ago, I, I had the misfortune of turning on NPR radio. NPR radio because they actually, at least here in Austin, they, they bring you the BBC radio, you know, here in the middle of the afternoon. So I have just completely wasted a trip to Bastrop, Texas. I have driven, uh, it'll be... And anyways, since about 32, 33 Texas, miles round trip I have taken to take my gas sucking truck to a uh, to a small engine repair shop that is no longer in business. I should have called first, I guess. So anyway, uh, while I'm down there wasting an hour of my time and probably two gallons of gas uh, on, on this wasted trip to Bastrop, I, you know, decided to go to Schlotsky's to eat. So I'm sitting out there in the in the parking lot of Schlotsky's eating this sandwich, and at 2:30, 13 minutes ago. They come on there and say they're going to do a story about palm oil, about how these fucking palm oil planet eaters in Southeast Asia, are, you know, are destroying the planet. So I said, all right, we're going to finally have some intelligent programming on NPR, although it's not really NPR, it's the BBC. Well, okay. Sumatra in Indonesia is one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. It's also still home to a large population of orangutans, but that habitat is under increasing pressure, mostly from the thriving palm oil industry on the island. And deforestation is now posing a major threat to orangutans. My BBC colleague, Mehulika Sitepu, reports from Sumatra. Thank you. Fifteen minutes. This is the sound of a baby orangutan being rescued after his mother was killed. A team from the Orangutan Information Center has been told a couple have been keeping him in a cage as a pet. How old was he when you got him? Since he was a baby. What did you name him? Bom Bom. <laughs> Getting Bom Bom to a rehabilitation center is his only chance at freedom in the wild. A mother orangutan will carry that infant around for almost 24 hours a day for several years. Dr. Ian Singleton is the founder of the Sumatran Orangutan Conservation Program. And so there's no way she is going to voluntarily hand over that infant or allow anybody to take it unless she's killed. She's always going to defend that infant with her life. The capture of young orangutans to sell as pets is a byproduct of rapid deforestation. Orangutans spend most of their time in trees. Their reddish brown hair makes them easy to distinguish from other great apes. The majority live in the Loza rainforest on the island of Sumatra. In recent years, more than 110,000 hectares of this important ecosystem has been lost, mainly due to the production of palm oil. Indonesia is the world's largest producer. Matthew Novak has been studying the impact of palm oil production on Loser. If we don't do something relatively soon, we could see sort of um, the Loser ecosystem itself, this pristine uh, ecosystem that houses uh, Sumatra's megafauna, be turned into sort of a very degraded uh, version of itself. I'm here at the outskirts of Loser. On my right side is corn and palm oil plantation. And on my left side is a forest waiting to be turned into another plantation. Here, locals often spot stranded orangutan. A large male orangutan is trapped, surrounded by palm oil and farmland. His old home gone. A rescue team hopes to move him into a protected forest. If they leave him, he may be shot by farmers who see large males as pests. The rescuers are scaring the orangutan because they are trying to get the orangutan to move to another tree so that he has a better landing area. Since the orangutan won't budge, the rescuers have to cut the tree. They got him. 
The Indonesian government has made some efforts to tackle the problem by introducing a temporary ban on new palm oil licenses. Police. But the industry is pushing for the deforestation to continue at a cost to Sumatra's wildlife. Kanya Lakshmi Siddhartha is from the Indonesian Palm Oil Association. Now who do we want to defend? The lives of human or orangutan? Orangutan. we want to keep the orangutans alive, then we will have to move them. Orangutans are already on the critically endangered list. They are estimated to be around 13,000 still alive. But Dr. Singleton says if the current rate of decline continues, they could be wiped out within 20 years. Uh, the goal is to kind of slow that down as much as we possibly can, such that when Indonesia is better organized and better able to protect its remaining forests, there's still some orangutans and other species like tigers and rhinos left. Oh yeah, That's right. Really the only real goal. Please, pull your all fucking the head out of your to ass. Save orangutans like bom bom will be for nothing if the deforestation of Loser continues at the current rate. No shit, Sherlock. The BBC's Mehulika Sitepu reporting from the Loser rainforest in Sumatra, Indonesia. Border communities struggle to help a growing number of migrants. That story ahead on the world. So anyway, yeah, so that, how long did that last? Three minutes? I waited through 15 minutes of transgender athletes took up okay so they give the destruction of the single the, the, the lesser rainforest is the only place on the planet uh, where orangutans elephants rhinos and tigers still all four survive the last place on the planet uh, that is worth four minutes. Uh, transgender athletes being uh, picked on or whatever uh, rates according to the BBC, not even just NPR, the BBC just figures that transgender athletes being picked on should be the number one story and should get twice as much coverage and then I guess we went from transgender athletes to I guess it was athletes who at least admit they're female or male or whatever getting sexually harassed that was about four minutes uh, and then we get to a four-minute story on uh, the destruction of uh, the single b biggest Garden of Eden left on planet Earth in that order and we wonder why we are so completely fucked when uh, the BBC is the closest thing we have on this planet to some uh, <clears throat> you know, some honest reporting about what's going on. And, and then, and what do they do in the four minutes? They uh, pull out some fucking horseshit hopium that uh, the country of Indonesia is, is going to come to its senses and uh, end up protecting its rainforest. So you walk away from that story uh, be, being spoon-fed uh, th this fucking uh, unadulterated horseshit that the goddamn company of the Indo company of Indonesia that's exactly what it is the company of Indonesia is going to do a fucking thing uh, to you know to save orangutans, tigers, elephants, or rhinos. <coughs> They're fucked. What did it say? Uh, in in uh, this so far, there's what is it? What did they say? One hundred and ten thousand uh, orangutans have been obliterated off the face of this earth. There's now they think thirteen thousand. Uh, hundred and ten thousand down, thirteen thousand to go, and that uh, this. Uh, <clears throat> 
and that goddamn Indonesia and, and, and this fucking planet are, are going to do a goddamn thing uh, when, when, you know, when the, when the planet choice is between cheap palm oil and, uh, you know, saving our fellow earthlings from obliteration off the face of this planet, cheap palm oil is going to win every single time. Anyway, I'm so glad I got to spend 15 minutes on NPR slash BBC uh, listening to these poor fucking little transgender athletes uh, being picked on uh, because these men uh, want to come in there and, and, and compete against women. And, and the women are, 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 it's the women that are saying this is some fucking bullshit. That this dude comes over here, says that it identifies uh, his gender as female, and, and then, uh, wow, and, and then runs off uh, with, uh, with all the, the, the prize money uh, in, in these sporting events. Jesus, you, you gotta love it uh, with the the the, the feminazis uh, calling out uh, the trannies. <laughs> yes. Meanwhile, while uh, orangutans are obliterated off the face of this planet, uh, we're we're sitting here uh, still talking about uh, fucking transgenders getting picked on. Jesus, I'm ready to puke up my goddamn sandwich. Well, uh, here I am, back in Garfield, bringing my gas-sucking lawnmower back to Garfield to go sit in the goddamn barn all summer so I can come back to a broken-down fucking lawnmower in six months. I'm out of here. In uh, 12 days, I will be rolling down the road, heading to New York, baby. Bye, guys.